A UV flaw in Lenovo gets fixed, Google Pixels suffer a lock screen bypass, and billions in Bitcoin get seized by the US government. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for November 15th, 2022. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Make sure to hit up my shop over at snubsy.com shop to grab yourself a ThreatWire electronic board while supplies last. Let's go ahead and jump into the news this week. Now, if you own one of about 25 different models of Lenovo ThinkBook, IdeaPad, or Yoga laptops, the brand just released two patches for some high severity vulnerabilities that could allow for a malicious actor to deactivate the UEFI, the UEFI secure boot, run unsigned code and modify the bootloader. This feature is used to verify code during the boot process before you load up your operating system. And make sure that none of the code is malicious, but if it's bypassed, that means unsigned and unverified code could be run before the OS boots, which could lead to malware or ransomware persistence even if you reinstalled or wiped your operating system. This problem was reportedly disclosed by ESET Research, that's E-S-E-T Research, in which they found a development driver was accidentally included by Lenovo that allows for changing secure boot settings from the OS. Since this was a development driver, it was not supposed to be included in the final production line. In order to exploit these vulnerabilities, an attacker would need to create special NVRAM variables. This is non-volatile RAM, which stores boot data. The flaws are tracked as CVE 2022-3430 and CVE 2022-3431. The first one is an issue with the WMI setup driver, and the latter is a vulnerability in the driver used during manufacturing that was not deactivated. Both of those could lead to elevation of privileges and secure boot modification by changing that NVRAM variable. A third issue, which is tracked as CVE 2022-3432, affects the IdeaPad Y700 12 ISK, but that model is end of life, so it will not be fixed. So if you own one of these laptops, you can visit Lenovo's security bulletin for more information and patch the firmware for your model as listed. The user-friendly option is just to run the update tool, which comes pre-installed on Lenovo products. Otherwise, you can absolutely use an online support portal from Lenovo to find directions for updating. A security researcher ran across a vulnerability on Android Pixel phones that could allow an attacker to easily bypass a lock screen with just a few steps. This is how it works. The attacker could input the wrong fingerprint three times, which would disable the biometric authentication option. After this, hot swap to an attacker-owned SIM card that they have previously set up a pin code on. Enter that pin code incorrectly three times, which will lock the SIM card. Then the Pixel will ask them to enter their SIM's personal unlocking key or PUK code, which is this eight digit number. They can then enter a new pin code for their SIM and the smartphone will automatically unlock to the home screen. In essence, this is a purposeful brute forcing attack with the intention of doing it wrong in order to bypass the lock screen. The only thing an attacker would need to do ahead of time is set up their own SIM card with a pin and make sure that they know the puck code. David Schutz, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right, reported the issue to Google back in June of 2022, and it was fixed in the November 2022 Android patch. It is tracked as CVE 2022-20465 and is an incorrect system state. Obviously, an attacker would need to have physical access to the Android phone in order to actually hot swap the SIM card, meaning that they would need to remove the old SIM card and input their own while the device is on. The researcher did post a video demoing the entire process. Google awarded Shoots $70,000 for finding and reporting this vulnerability. It affects Android 10, 11, 12, and 13, and it was originally tested on a Pixel 5 and a Pixel 6. Now from your own Pixel phone, go to your system settings and check for updates. The patch was released already in early November. 
biggest of shout outs to my Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sharing their fur baby photos and for the support. And a huge thank you to Ashley for being a part of the Alliance over at patreon.com slash threatwire. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Shannon Morse for everything from tech reviews to security tutorials. I recently posted this comparison of the Pixel 7 Pro versus the 6 Pro just in case you wanna upgrade. Do not forget to like and subscribe to Hack5 as well. Let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story all about Bitcoins. All of them, just kidding, not all of them. Last week, the US Department of Justice said that it had seized about 50,000 Bitcoin or $3.36 billion worth of cryptocurrency from devices owned by defendant James Zong in connection with the Silk Road from 2012. Yeah, that was a really long time ago. Now, the Bitcoin was seized in November of 2021 after it was stolen way back in 2012 from the Silk Road dark web marketplace. This marketplace was known as a place where criminals could sell all sorts of illicit goods or services, and it was finally taken down in 2013. The founder of Silk Road was sentenced to life in prison. James Zong, back in 2012, created several fake accounts on Silk Road, triggered 140 transactions, and stole 50,000 Bitcoin by taking advantage of this lag in the Silk Road's transactional system, which allowed him to withdraw more than what he actually had. He then used many different wallets and many different transactions to hide this stolen Bitcoin. The DOJ also recovered about $661,900 in cash. They also had gold and silver bars and a lot more. The DOJ said that this came about after a search warrant was issued for Zong's house in the state of Georgia in the USA. They found keys to the tokens in an underground floor safe and a hidden SBC or a single board computer, which kind of sounds like a Raspberry Pi or something similar. Zong pleaded guilty to committing wire fraud in September of 2012 when he stole the Bitcoin from Silk Road. He did voluntarily surrender much of the Bitcoin starting in March of 2022. He could face 20 years in prison and he will hear his sentence on February 22nd, 2023. Now you may have noticed this week that I have a shirt on. It says Paloma. Paloma is the wife of one of my tech YouTube content creator friends named El Jefe. His wife, Paloma, passed away and he made this design to honor her. She was two years older than me and she was also super into Sailor Moon just like I am, hence this design with the wings and the heart, which is very similar to one of Sailor Moon's compacts. This Paloma shirt is available to purchase through Beats for Hope, which is this nonprofit, and 100% of the profits for this design are donated to the Alameda County Community Food Bank in California. So far, Paloma's design has raised enough for about 300 meals, in fact, over 300 meals and counting. It's a wonderful way to honor her memory it helps people in need and you get this dope t-shirt or a hoodie at the same time. The link is down below if you wanna support. I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you on the internet.